Okay, quick video on simplifying rational exponents. Uh, try to go through a couple variations of what this might look like. So let's uh, go through some stuff. Um, let's talk about this thing. Here's uh, n to the fourth quantity raised to the three halves power. The simple rule of exponents I'm going to use here is that a to the power of m, the quantity raised to the nth power, is a to the m times n. We talked about this when you were in um, Algebra 1. So this is, this is not anything new. What makes it new is this weird rational exponent, but the same rule applies. That, that gives us hope, doesn't it? So what we really have is this. We have n to the 4. Now, if this helps you, you can use this. Remember, 4 is 4 over 1, isn't it? Times 3 halves. And if you didn't want to rationalize this, well, you didn't have to, but it helps me to visually line things up. And remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across, don't we? There and there. So wouldn't that give us, as our final solution, well, as our semi-final solution, n to the 12 halves, and we know that 12 divided by 2 is 6. So our final answer is n to the sixth power. All right, so same rule that we knew before. Here's um, a problem that seems to throw a lot of people off, and I'm not beating you up, but I, I don't know why it throws you off. So here's question number two. The question number two uh, begs this. 25, is it 25 here? 25 x to the sixth power, all raised to the negative 1.5 power. So I can see how bits of this are troubling. So what I say to my students is, you know what? I don't like this either. Let's forget about the negative sign for just a second, and let's deal with this 1.5, if you don't mind. Because 1.5, it can work, but for me, I'd rather have it a different way. And 1.5 is equal to 1 and 1 half. Can we agree on that? And now, here's the question. Do you remember when you used to do this? You would do 2 times 1 and then add the 1 on top. Do you remember that? So what would that give us? Well, that would give us 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 is 3. That would give us 3 halves. Now, I don't know about you, but that makes it better for me. So I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to just going to replace this. I'm going to rewrite. I think it, that's that skill we use so much in calculus, rewriting. And I think it's a skill we should bring down a little bit. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this negative exponents. Remember, negative exponents. Negative exponents cause fractions. Negative exponents do not cause negative numbers. Ne so stop the tape. Write this down a thousand times. So every time you see a negative exponent, you want to go, oh, negative number. No. Negative exponents cause fractions. So all I'm going to do with this is I'm going to cure this. I'm going to think of it like this. And I'm just going to take this whole thing and I'm going to flip it over. So I'm going to get this one is this one. This solidus right here, the fraction bar, is this one right here. And we're going to have now 25x to the 6th, all raised to the positive 3 halves power. What happened to the negative exponent? It was cured because we know that negative exponents cause fractions. And now I'm going to distribute this, right? And this is where I see a lot of mistakes being made. I'm really concerned about it. Remember, here's the rule. Remember the rule. This is the rule that a b to the power of m is equal to a to the m times b to the m. That is to say, say it with me, exponents are distributive over multiplication. So what we need to do with that is this. Send this to here, right, and to here. And what I'm seeing is that many of you are just distributing this exponent to here. You're forgetting about this. So when we distribute this, it looks like this, doesn't it? Now, we also know that rational exponents cause radicals, and this is the index or the root. So we have the square root of 25. That's causing that this 2 is this 2 here. We don't usually write the 2, but there's where the 2 would be. This 3 is here, and that 3 goes here. All right. Or some people would rather put it in parentheses and put the 3 on the outside. It does not matter. Times, and then we have x, right? Now we have this x, x to the sixth, but right, it's times that 
three halves power, isn't it? And we get three times six is 18, and 18 over two equals nine. So we have x to the ninth power. Does that, I hope that makes sense. And don't forget that we had this whole thing over one. I mean, whole thing under one, didn't we? So I just this was just a little bit of side work I did over here. Now people get really confused. They're like, <laughs> so I solved some people. I'm sorry, I'm not laughing at you. They did 25 cubed. My gosh, that must have taken forever. But what's the square root of 25? So you could do this part first. It doesn't matter. Whatever part is easier, you can do first. So I'm going to do this part first. So I'm going to ask myself, what is the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is 5. Right? So I answered this part. Now I'm going to do something about this. What is 5 to the third power? Well, 5 to the third power is 125, isn't it? So I'm going to rebuild this whole thing. This solidus uh, fraction bar is this. This one is this one right here, isn't it? I did all this. I took the square root of 25, was 5. I cubed that and got 125. So that's where I got the 125. Right? I dealt with this piece right here. This is me dealing with this piece right here. And we dealt with that piece right there, didn't we? And we got x to the ninth power. So that's my x to the ninth power. All right? So I hope that was helpful. Let's try, let's try one more, shall we? One more problem. And the problem I choose is this mess of a problem. 4x squared. That looks easy enough over 2x to the 1 half. First thing I want to do is I want to adjust my vision, and I want to say this. I want to say x to the 1 half here. I'm going to take my x squared. x squared has 4 over 2 is the same as squared, isn't it? So I just traded this in. I had a 2, and I traded it in for 4 halves. So that's what I did. Why? Because I've got some work to do here. 4 over 2 is 2, isn't it? And then we have, right, we have this rule. x to the m over x to the n. This is a algebra 1 rule. It's x to the m minus n. So that's what we're going to do. We have x over x. So we have x to the 4 halves minus 1 half, which is equal to x to the 3 halves, isn't it? So we have 2 x to the 3 halves power. There's our answer. All right? All the rules, you have them. Be patient. Don't panic. Ask yourself, what rules do I know? And apply the rules that you know. You can really do this. Go Terps.